When we launched Corel Painter for the first time, we were greeted by the welcome menu. The welcome menu makes it quick and easy to get started with Corel Painter. We can navigate through the welcome menu from the left side of the window. News is currently selected, and this page features new content and resources for Corel Painter. Next, let's take a look at the Documents page, which can be useful for quickly creating or opening your art projects. There are options to create a new canvas, to open pre-existing compositions, and there is a list of document templates that can be used as a starting point. Once we begin creating artwork in Corel Painter, a list of our recent documents will appear on this page as well. Let's go ahead and move on to the Setup page. The left side of the setup page allows you to quickly configure Corel Painter's interface to be optimized for various workflows. We'll come back to this in a later lesson when we discuss workspace customization. On the right side of the setup page, there is an option to apply brush tracking. Brush tracking refers to the pressure sensitivity of the pen that comes with your drawing tablet. Beneath brush tracking, we can also choose our color management settings. Feel free to experiment with the different types of layouts to see if there's one that you like best. Next, we'll move on to performance. The performance page presents us with the Brush Accelerator, a utility that analyzes your computer hardware and then automatically chooses optimal performance settings for your system. The Brush Accelerator also provides feedback about how well your computer can run Corel Painter, and it indicates how you might be able to upgrade components to improve performance. The Brush Acceleration dialog can be accessed from several locations within Corel Painter. You can find it under Performance in the Welcome menu, it can be found in the Corel Painter Preferences under Performance, and you can find it under Advanced in the Properties bar by clicking on the Brush Accelerator button in the Performance panel. I'll choose the Brush Accelerator that is located in the Welcome menu. It's important to run this before you do anything else to ensure Painter is running optimally on your system. Before I run the test, I want to close any unnecessary applications that might be running on my computer. Next, I'll click on Optimize Now. Once the test starts, some brush strokes will begin to appear on the test canvas. Be sure not to press any buttons on your keyboard or do anything else on your computer until the test is finished. Once the test is complete, you will be presented with your score. This score gives you an idea of how well your computer is able to run Corel Painter. I am recording what I am doing, which is taking up a large chunk of my computer resources. Therefore, my score is lower than it was when I ran the test with only Painter open. It's normal if your score varies a little each time you run the test. If you are getting a low score, that doesn't mean you can't use Corel Painter. It just means certain brushes may work more slowly. There are workarounds, like working on a smaller canvas or painting with simple brushes, which will allow you to control Painter even on underpowered computers. Beneath the System Requirements box, there is a button that says Learn More About Your Results with information on how to interpret the report. For an in-depth analysis of the Brush Accelerator score, have a look at my reference video. If you are on an M1 Mac, it can run Painter natively. You'll notice that Painter now supports Neon processor instructions, which can speed up brush performance similarly to AVX2. Moving on to the next page in the Welcome menu, we'll take a look at Tutorials. This page features a collection of tutorials by Corel Painter instructors like myself. These lessons go more in-depth into specific topics and techniques you can apply to Corel Painter. The final page in the welcome menu is Store. Here you can browse for additional brush packs and paper textures to purchase. There are tons of different kinds of brushes and papers available that can create a wide range of natural effects, art styles, design elements, and more. This page also features special offers, and even the occasional hardware and software that can be used with Corel Painter. You can filter the results over on the right. And if you have purchased content, you can use the filters to show only your purchased content by clicking on My Library. By default, the Welcome menu is going to appear every time you launch Corel Painter, and it will display whichever page you had selected. In my opinion, the Documents page is the most useful page to show upon launching Painter, because it gives you access to your recent documents and document templates. However, if you don't want the Welcome menu to appear every time you launch Corel Painter, you can click on the gear icon in the top right of the window, and then uncheck Show This at Startup. Next time you launch Corel Painter, the Welcome menu will remain hidden. Clicking on the X in the top right will close the Welcome menu. Should you ever want to get the Welcome menu back, just go to the Help menu and choose Welcome to restore it. I'll go ahead and close the Welcome menu, and we can move on to creating a new canvas. 
In order to start painting, we need to create a new canvas. To do that, we can go to File, New. Now when I say canvas, I don't necessarily mean that you're going to be painting literally on a canvas. Your canvas can be paper, wood, stone, or any kind of substrate. But in digital art terms, the document you're working on is referred to as the canvas. When we choose to create a new canvas, we get the new image dialog. Here we can give our painting a title. I'll just call this test one. The most important settings here are the width, height, and resolution. The width and height will determine the intended size of the canvas. Right now, our unit of measurement is set to pixels. We can change this to inches, centimeters, points, picas, or columns. Most commonly, you'll be using inches if you're creating artwork for print. If you're creating artwork specifically for the web, then you'll be using pixels. Let's go ahead and just set it to inches. Now we don't want to choose an arbitrary width and height. We want to choose a canvas size that will match standard frame and print sizes, such as 4x6, 8x10, 11x14, and 18x24. Choosing a standard print and frame size ensures that your image matches the size of the paper or canvas you're using for your print. If the image does not match your print size, then the artwork will have to be cropped or you will have to add a border around your artwork. Another advantage to using a common print size is that the aspect ratio of the image remains constant as you scale larger or smaller. For example, if I create a canvas that is 18 inches by 24 inches, I can also scale the print down to 16 by 20, 11 by 14, and 8 by 10 without cropping too much off. When choosing a canvas size, try to imagine the largest you would want to print the image, and then make your decision based on that. That's because when it comes to resizing artwork, scaling your image smaller doesn't harm the image quality. But if you try to enlarge your artwork, it's going to become blurry and pixelated. So resizing artwork is kind of a one-way street. Let's go ahead and choose 10 inches wide by eight inches tall. The next setting is resolution, which determines the amount of detail in the image. A painting with a higher resolution will have sharper, finer details compared to a low resolution painting. If you were to look closely at a high resolution painting, you would see more detail than you would if you zoomed into a low resolution painting. There are some general rules that you can follow to choose an ideal resolution. If you will be printing your artwork, 300 pixels per inch is the standard resolution but you can certainly add or remove resolution to suit your needs. If you're working in pixels, you don't have to worry about resolution since the image will be displayed based on its pixel dimensions. I'm not going to dive too deep into how resolution affects the width and height of your artwork in this lesson, but I do have a reference video you can watch about that subject if you want to learn more. Another important consideration when choosing a resolution is file size. Extra large or very high resolution canvases require a lot more processing power from your computer. Corel Painter will begin to behave slowly the larger a file you create. For example, 18 by 24 inches or larger is a good threshold for starting to reduce your resolution. You could reduce the resolution to 240 or even 150. That's because this would be a larger piece of artwork. And if you were to print it out at this resolution, it would likely be viewed from a distance and not up close like a smaller print would be. As a rule of thumb, the larger the width and height of the print, the lower the resolution can be. The smaller the artwork, the higher the resolution can be. So let's set the width to 10 inches, the height to eight inches, and the resolution to 300 to create the canvas we will be working on for this demonstration. It is possible to create canvas presets to reuse later. Beneath resolution are the orientation buttons. You can use these to swap the width for the height and rotate the canvas orientation. On the right side of the new image dialog are canvas options. You can change the canvas or paper color if you want to tone it. And you can choose the paper texture. We're going to look at how to use these later in the course, so we'll just leave these set to their defaults. Beneath that, there is a checkbox for start painting on a layer. By toggling this on, Painter will automatically create a new blank layer for you to paint on. Below the checkbox is a menu for layer type. Here you can choose the type of layer you want to create. We'll discuss layer types later in this course, so for now, just set it to default. If you plan to paint on a transparent background, you can also turn on the Hide Canvas checkbox. And the last setting in the new image dialog allows you to set the color profile for the composition. We'll be coming back to color profiles later, so leave it at its default. Once I click on OK, Painter will create my 8x10 canvas with the layer settings I chose. If you're working on a Mac, your screen may look different than mine because I'm working on a Windows computer. My canvas appears inside of a window. Personally, I don't like this windowed mode, 
So I will maximize the window to fill my workspace and surround my canvas with a gray background. Now you're ready to start painting on your canvas. If you'd like to learn more about how to use Corel Painter, check out my free tutorials and paid courses.